Welcome back to the LPR Trading Group YouTube channel. It's Dave again. I've got another video for you guys. This video came from a comment from Leo. It was a request. He says, hey man, I love your videos. I started using Quantower last week. How do you get your charts to look like that? I was fiddling around with the cluster charts, but I can't get mine to look like yours. So Leo, this video is for you and anyone else who is wondering how to get their Quantower cluster charts looking something like this. So what you have to do first is any random chart here, whatever chart you're working on, there's going to be a little button in the top right-hand corner. It's going to look like a magnifying glass with a few bars in, in the middle of it. You're going to click this guy, and it's going to give you this bar at the bottom, cluster, custom profile, step profile, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to get our charts looking like this is we want to use the cluster, the left profile, and the time statistic. So we'll start with the cluster. If we click here, it's going to give you a few options. What I have mine set to is type imbalance, and the cluster visualization is going to be histogram. Okay, so we click histogram. It's going to show us the volume nodes, right? So you see the bulging volume nodes here on the histogram. That is exactly what we're looking for. The imbalances, what that's going to give us is it'll show us these colors that we'll set up here, but it'll show us the imbalances between the bids and the offers in colors. For me personally, my eyes work a lot better looking at colors rather than trying to calculate uh, a number imbalance as prices flying around. I'd rather just see the color and know it's like a three to one or a six to one imbalance. So we will get there. So now once you have that, we've got to go to this little gear at the bottom. Click this little gear, it'll bring up like a settings window. Now we already have our type imbalance, our cluster visualization as histogram. This is great. Volume color, for me, I just use gray. This is gonna be the color of the actual volume here. So if I go blue, you'll see it all changes to blue. Use whatever works for you. For me, gray is what's working for me right now. And I don't think it's that gray. There we go. Gray is what is working for me right now, okay? Now, imbalance ratios. This is where we get the colors here, where the numbers change colors. So I use imbalance ratios three, and six. And what I do is I set the buy imbalance ratio to green, the sell or the for three to one, and for six to one, I set it to yellow. So I know anything yellow is a huge imbalance between the buy and the sell side. For the sell side, three to one, I use this purpley color, and six to one, I use pink. I'm gonna open up each of these quickly. You guys can pause the video if you want the hex code. You just type in this hex code and you'll get the exact same color for me or exact same color that I have if you're interested here's the six to one buy here's the three to one sell and here's the six to one sell okay moving forward here are some of my other settings here show stacking imbalances what this is going to do is if we have three or more three to one or six to one imbalances stacked on a given candle, it's going to show us this extended yellow area. Or if it's, um, for example, three to one imbalances, it'll show us an extended green area. Uh, for the cells, it'll show us purple or pink. Why is this helpful? Well, because if buyers are very interested in price in this area, and this is where they aggressively push price up, and now time has gone by, right? Time has gone by, we're not gonna remember what happened back then, and likely it's not really gonna matter on a one minute chart, but you can see we pull back right into the previous aggressive buying. So I like to have these on, and when I see price getting close to this area, I zoom out back to the origin, and I have a look to see what happened here and what was going on, right? And then I can make a decision based on that. Okay, let's pull up these um, settings again. Settings. So show stacked imbalances, and I have zone count set to three. By default, some of this stuff is going to be selected. I used to use, you know, highlight zeros, unfinished auctions, all that stuff. I don't use it anymore. Uh, unfinished auctions are good for higher time frame plays. I would say like 30 minute, one hour, 15 minute, even higher than that. Uh, down on the one minute and five minute chart, me personally, I don't find it super useful. So I, I don't have any of these checked off here. 
uh, show POC, this is the point of control per candle, per print. So this is going to tell you what the highest volume tick value was at each print, right? The reason why there's two of them is because the volume is the same, okay? So typically, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to have a single point of control on each print. I've made my point of control background white. You can just simply change this to whatever you'd like, blue, right? So whatever suits your eye. Uh, next up right here, secondary POC colors. Don't have to worry about any of this. Um, you can hit show profile, show value area. Okay, so value area could get very interesting on something like a five or 15 minute chart. On the one minute, not so much. But what is the value area? So if I show the value area, it's going to be the area of the candle that traded the most volume. So you can see right, and we'll actually change this color. Try and make this more visible for you guys. Here we go. Okay, so you can see these blue lines, right? Those blue lines at the top and at the bottom, that's the value area. This is where like 70% of the volume was traded on this candle or on this print, okay? So that's, uh, that's very useful to know um, where the most interaction is on each print. We'll go back in here, and that's about it for this cluster area. So with this, you guys should have some prints that are looking very similar to mine. Okay, now if we go to left profile, click left profile, I like to show today's profile, okay? So what is today's profile? It's gonna show me all the volume for today. So if I zoom out and I get different candles or different prints in this profile on the left, it's not gonna change. It's not gonna change based on what it sees, it's gonna show me the profile on the day. And I find this very useful because where is the point of control on the day? Where are the higher volume nodes on the day? We could possibly trade back into them, hold under them, hold over them, et cetera, et cetera. Quant Tower is very nice in that you can use multiple profiles, or you can do, uh, say, today's profile on the left, and on the right side, you can do like a 30-minute profile to see like a more narrowed range. Like what's the profile within this narrow range? So this one's really simple. I just have today selected. We can go to the settings here. I have my histogram width at 10%. If we jack this up, this is what this does. Uh, we'll do 30. You see how it pushes the histogram further out? I don't need that. 10% works for me. I've got, um, oops. I've got the value label set to white. So those are all the numbers here. The volume numbers, they're set to white. Again, we're on today, and I just select gray. Okay, gray is going to show me, gray is going to be the color of this volume profile. We scroll down, show POC. I have this one on blue. So you can see this blue bar here. This is the highest volume tick value of the day. This is very important. Show value area, very similar to the candles, right? If we scroll down like this, you're going to see, scroll down a bit more. There we go. You're going to see the blue line up here and blue line down here. This is the value area for this session. Sometimes the value area could be the whole day, right? This is the value area for this session. Um, it, it might be the whole day depending on if you have uh, the, the past week, the past two days set, whatever it is. Um, if you're using a single day, so today's volume profile, it's going to be where the largest amount of volume was traded based on whatever number you set here. So that's that for the profile. Time statistics. The time statistics are what we see here at the bottom, okay? So it's going to be volume, delta, max delta, and min delta. And this is where we set this up. So we go into the time statistics. You're going to have a bunch of other nonsense selected here by default. You want volume, delta, max delta, min delta. Click here. And these are my colors. Volume color is going to be purple. Trade color, I don't really care about it. Delta colors, blue and red. You can make these whatever you want. One thing that I want to tell you, and, and this is the only way I know to fix this, is if your color has a slash through it, like a line through it like this, it's not going to change colors. You see how this purple on the volume is darker, getting lighter, getting lighter. It's changing colors based on volume growth. Same with the red here. Very bright, big numbers. Not so bright, 
small numbers. So we want this, right? Again, I like the colors, very visual. So if you have a line through your color here, it's not going to change colors like that or change shades. The way to fix that is if you click this and you click a color down here that doesn't have the line through it, it's going to get rid of the line. Then we can go back and we can click whatever color we wanted, say we wanted yellow, and boom. Now we got no line, we're gonna change those shades and it's gonna look, it's gonna be much more visually appealing. Okay? And again, volume delta, max delta, min delta. Uh, the only other things I have on my chart right now are these two moving averages. It's a 50 and a 21 EMA. Uh, I mean, not a huge deal. I have them on there because a lot of traders trade off of them. And if I have one of my setups lining up with one of these EMAs or an EMA pattern that a lot of traders are taking, I have a little bit more conviction in it because a lot of people are seeing this pattern. Um, so, I, so I like to take, take trades in those, in those areas when they line up with what I'm doing. Uh, with that said, I think we're done for the video. Uh, 